Hello, welcome to Real Film Snobs. I'm Brian Michael. That would make me Angela Yeager. We have an exciting show for you this week. We have a space epic, an indie comedy, a stripper thriller. <laughs> <laughs> so I, would I just it. learned that term, stripper thriller, uh, an outdated bro comedy and a perplexing film starring Andrew Garfield, a.k.a. Spider-Man. So uh, you saw a clip at the top of the show for the first movie this week, which is Ad Astra. And Brad Pitt starts, stars in the film as an astronaut who travels to the edge of the solar system to save the Earth. And to also possibly locate, do we want to talk about uh, we, that? No, we were talking about finding your father and having closure. I know. This is all these movies are always about. But he also is supposed to save the Earth. Yes. Because we're having these. And I said, I did not want to go see a movie with daddy or mommy issues out in space. And everyone was, everybody went and saw it before me. We were like, no, no, it's not about that. Please. <laughs> that is exactly what this movie is about. But okay. go ahead and explain. Well, you already interrupted my <laughs> intro, so what else is there to say? So as I mentioned before I was so rudely interrupted, the film star is Brad Pitt, and this is the Brad Pitt show, really. He's in every frame of this movie. Tommy Lee Jones plays his long-lost father. There's some other great cast in here, but they're not given a whole lot to do. Donald Sutherland, Liv Tyler, I don't know if she counts as great cast, but she's in the movie, um, and others. And so, <laughs> and yes, you're right, this is a film about fathers and sons. Um, I'm going to start with what I liked about it, because mm -hmm. I have a feeling you didn't like it. I like James Gray's films, by the way. I think he does some interesting stuff. He yes. makes mainstream movies in a classical style that you don't see in Hollywood much anymore. Um, this film, I think, I call it the anti-interstellar, and here's why. Both of those films were about people finding their parents. But what I hated about Interstellar is something this film actually... Um, I think addresses interstellar was sort of like this idea like oh we've ruined everything on here on earth so we need to go out somewhere else to colonize whatever well in it in this movie in Ad Astra they've already done that they've got this thing on the Mars and they've got a colony on the moon and it's awful and it's just devoid of humanity and there's still nothing green and everyone's just living in these underground tunnels and Brad Pitt's this whole idea of him seeking humanity and also seeking out his father also makes him appreciate life on earth more and so I liked that aspect of it I'm still bored. You didn't like uh, it. You know, I, 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 I really loved, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with Brad Pitt, so I was really excited to see him in this. I knew it was a smaller budgeted film, so I was like when they get around the space stuff, and um, and actually it doesn't look like it's a, a small budget film. It looks really great. It's not that uh, small. Really, yeah, well, it looks really good. Um, but, you know, they do the, the overdubbed, or the, not the overdubbed, they do the voiceover, voiceover, which really sometimes is so just so unnecessary. It's just so unnecessary. It isn't needed. I know what's going on. I know what we're thinking here. And then sometimes the thoughts are just boring. And um, I was really bummed because of the, the hype going into this one was really high. I'd actually heard some reviews where people were like, oh, my gosh, this is my favorite film of the year. So, okay, good. I don't want to listen any further. And then I saw the movie, and then I listened to them and completely disagreed. Um, I just was bored by this film. Now, in my de in my defense, I was really tired the night I saw this. I don't that know why. Good movie to go yeah. on to see. Tired. And so it was really I like oh, people I, I was that. like trying to t totally stay awake, and it was really hard to do because you know I kind of was watching and you kind of phase out, and and it was repeating the same thing kind of over. And there's the humanity here, and da 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 da, and it just is. It's just such a monotone type of film, and some of the things that they're doing actually really exciting and, and, you know, exhilarating to me because space freaks me out because you have to be in a thing and you have no air and there's monkeys and such um, that I, I really enjoyed, but it was just so, he's this guy whose heart rate never goes up. Neither does the film. And no, so and that's actually, I think, so part of the point. The, the, the film is very even yeah, killed. But, even when action happens, when action does happen, like when they go onto this other ship and something correct. happens, you're almost, like, shocked. Like, oh, my yeah. gosh, something And everyone's kind of freaks out, and he's just like, okay, you know, Captain, can I take over? Captain, should I take over? That's I'm like, oh, my gosh, That's he's like over. this person who's, like, stuffed yes. his emotions so far down. I think Brad Pitt was I, really good in this Well, I don't say he was bad in it. I just didn't think he was given enough, and I think they could have seen it more of that struggle than just this voiceover that, yeah, I mean, it was but like, when he oh, finally loses I stubbed my toe. So, I really thought you know, it was powerful. When he finally breaks emotions, I thought it was really and powerful. And I think we could have had more of that. I think we should have seen uh, and more of that. And, it, I, I think it, and then every once in a while we use that check-in with the emotion stuff. He kind of knows what to say to get past it. But just that was interesting, but it was just... 
Oh, I, I think you know. have to be in the right frame of mood for this movie. I will say, I've told people, don't see the late night showing. I saw it, and you know, partially because I've been having a lot of, I think if you're like in an anxious mood and you're looking for something to bring you down, I was in the mood for like a very even keeled film. Um, I'm not saying it's a classic. It's not, I don't even say it's as good as Gravity. I'm giving it three stars. But I, yeah. for me, there was enough. I liked the use of the set pieces on Mars and Moon, and I thought Brad Pitt's performance was really good, and I think he anchors the whole film. You know, a little bit of Tommy Lee Jones goes a long way in some of the scenes. He's great, but he, um, I don't know, he's just like he yeah. almost was acting in a different movie And to let Pitt. somebody go, oh, really? We had to do it. That, I could give too much of the movie away, but you know exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, it was just yeah. like, come on. Yeah, I didn't so love times. it, but I didn't hate it. Like, Why is there your father out in space? Why can't it be your mother? <laughs> Well, there's that. Maybe yeah. that's, well, there's another space movie coming, what, in a month or two with uh, Natalie Portman, maybe that one. But I don't oh, think that's God, her father that's or right. her mother. I think oh. that's her something else, some other issue. So you're giving it, it you're stars. giving what, two stars for yeah. this one? Okay. It looked pretty. It looked good. Yeah. 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 I enjoyed it. I don't think it's a masterpiece, but I think I liked it more than you did. So considering I often don't like outer space movies. So maybe it's an outer space movie for people who don't like outer space movies. I don't know. So we'll move on to our next movie, Brittany Runs a Marathon. And we have, okay, you saw a clip for Brittany Runs a Marathon. And hey, this is exactly the kind of movie title Brian loves because it basically tells you what the movie's about right in the title. It yeah. is about a woman who is seeking to change her life by running in the New York Marathon. That's it. That's the whole, that's the pretty much the plot. So Jillian Bell uh, plays the title character of Brittany, and she is fantastic. And also talking about another performance that anchors a film, because she's in every scene of the movie. So whether you're going to like the movie or not hinges on whether you like her character and can follow along her journey. you don't know journey. who she is. Yeah. Most people don't know who she is and give this movie a chance because she is fantastic. Yeah, and she's a comedian. And yeah. you know, the thing is, and it's not a comedian type of performance, so it's got some nuance. Mm. And she, her character of Brittany is not always the most likable person. She does things occasionally. I don't think she's unlikable either. I read some reviews after I saw it that said, oh, she's an unlikable. I don't think she's an unlikable person. I think a lot of the things that she does are unlikable. You, you kind of understand why. You know, she lashes out at someone yeah. at one point and you understand why she's done that. Yeah. Um, I think she's overall, I thought she was a likable person of course she loves animals so maybe that was the clue for me i'm supposed to like her um but you know it's a cute comedy uh, i know that uh, our sundance film festival correspondents reviewed this on, on their show and this was yeah. their favorite film they saw at sundance um hopefully that that isn't telling of what showed at sundance because i think it's a solid three-star movie i don't think yeah. this is a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination oh but it's just such an enjoyable film yeah it's a three-star film but i you know it kind of reminded me of late night i really enjoyed it i wish it kind of it could have dug deeper it could have done some things because what it does right it does really well with the running with her running and just going a step and just going around the block and then just doing this and getting the cramps doing that and the things that she's doing because i recently got into a lot of running treadmill running but still it's running and um Although that's really, actually one of the funniest scenes in the movie when she goes to the gym she goes and to the finds gym, how much yeah. the membership but she goes you know people can do this outside right you can do it anywhere for free for free Ready. yeah yeah and so i really enjoyed that and, and i and i like the fact that you know she finds a change in her life and of course you see these things in movies all the time you know and they have a little montage but she actually gets a new surrounding a new new friends two new friends that are very supportive and i love the the, the conversations that they have going back and forth because whenever she had you know would say something when she wasn't feeling well they immediately were like well how are you what's going on and they were uh, other like her, like her friend her friend her best friend who is very surface level and is is you know quite shallow um and i really enjoyed that because she changed her mindset she changed her environment she changed her surroundings and i really thought that was fantastic and, and very funny because she does some house sitting for a dog sitting mm -hmm. at a place and kind of moves in and right. she has another dog sitter there another actor who i really enjoyed also he was i think the cast is yeah really the character well. played jern i think yeah, I, it, jern, yeah. yeah um and she was like what kind of name is that and he said that's racist anyway that was funny he was really good yeah very good yeah it's a really good cast i thought it was a lot of fun i had seen this movie advertised all over the internet so i was like is this a tv show has it gone already because it's been they've been advertising the living daylights out of it for the past few weeks but um i'm glad i saw it it's really good and it's a, it's a nice it's a good feel good movie yeah, it does feel good. I, you know, I was worried when it first started because I thought, oh no, is this going to be all about her just losing weight? And then it's like, oh, I'm a new person. And now that yeah. I've lost weight, my life is so much better. And I'm so glad it, it didn't go in that direction. As someone who obviously is not on the slender side, I was worried 
that was really going to be where it goes. And at first it kind of starts that way because she does start to like lose weight and then yeah. she starts to feel great and she's thinking, oh, my life is totally changed. But you realize it's about more than that. It's yep. about losing these, as you mentioned, toxic friendships she had yep. in her life, people that made her feel bad about herself that weren't supportive, who weren't supporting her in her journey, whatever that was. And she finds these other people who are supporting her and it's not just about losing weight, just supporting her as a person. So I think it makes the same mistake Late Night did and in that it has that, you know, it has to get the romance in there. Yeah. And I thought their little flirtation was good, but I didn't feel like, oh, and now for her life to be complete, she has to have a boyfriend or a husband or whatever. I just get yeah. tired of that always being the coda. At the end. Exactly. And they did the same thing with Late Night where they felt felt the need to like pin that on to exactly. Mindy Kaling. And I just didn't, I didn't feel like it was needed in this movie. No. That's not what it was about in yeah. terms of her journey. So, but yeah, it's a solid like three star movie. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Moving right along with just uneventful films. So. I know. What is going on this fall? We better, <laughs> things have got to ramp up here with some good movies. As well, let's take a look at uh, a clip from our next film, Hustlers. Okay, so that is a clip from Hus Hustlers. Uh, this uh, stars Jennifer Lopez as a stripper who then steals from her wealthy clients. Enough said. I mean, that's really much. I'm pretty sure that's all the studio had to say to get this movie greenlit. Um, and of course, everyone, did, my thought, first thought was, oh, nice. I haven't seen a Jennifer uh, Lopez movie in the theater since 2004. I looked it up. And uh, actually, the director, oh boy, Loren Scarfia? Lorena. Yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. She did uh, Seeking a Friend at the End of the World, one of my favorite films of that particular year. Uh, so I was kind of excited about this. It's based on a New York Times uh, article about the strippers. When, the, uh, when the, the economy went bad in 2008, they started actually stealing from their wealthy clients who from Wall Street um, and brokers and who they felt that deserved because they were stealing from the American people. Why can't we steal from them? So they were drugging them, overcharging their cards, and pocketing the money. It's quite the scheme. And the way the film starts, and the first half of this movie is so good because it really sets things up with these characters and it's been compared many times to Casino or Goodfellas because it has a little over um, a voice over and it shows how the cons are run and um, I, I really enjoyed that uh, Jennifer Lopez several times when she came on the screen I went wow my gosh she's fantastic and she's so good in this movie where has she been why hasn't she been doing movie oh she has been doing movies three or four times this movie went oh wow gosh I haven't seen her she's so good she's my been eyes, doing movies we my haven't eyes seen go her. right to her and the problem I had with the she's film, a star. yeah, well, she still has movie star qualities. Constance Wu, I'm, who I'm not too familiar with, nothing, nope, zero. A flat line in here, and I thought, well, she doesn't look like a stripper. She can't dance like a stripper. She doesn't seem like a stripper at any point right. in time. She has no. Which you kind could of argue is sort of part of the casting because she's supposed to be the fish out of at water first, that's learning. Sure, but yeah, sure, no, but then after a while, I'm like, I, issues, she yeah. wears these outfits, and I still am like, you know, yeah. Meryl Streep is an amazing actress. Meryl Streep in this role would not work because Meryl Streep is not sexy in that way to me. And the same thing with Constant Blue. I just said, I'm not sexy there. And, of course, in the video that, or the, the previews, they showed that you know Lizzo is in it and so is Cardi B. And they're in it for like two seconds and they're really good. And I thought, oh, cool. We're going to... Nope, that's it. I wanted more Cardi B, Dang. especially. Oh, Cardi B was Cardi so good. Cardi B, in the, the one scene she, she has when she's telling off the strip club owner. Fantastic. And she seems like a stripper in the movie. I well, mean, she's she like, has oh, I know she has. Well, no, when she was commentating on what to do and how to do things, I thought that was great. Yeah, was no, cool she's scene. got the, she's got the attitude. She's got the the physique. She yeah. So yeah, I I agree with you. Um, believe it or not. So Constance Wu was in. Uh, she's in Fresh Off the Boat, the TV series, and then she got really big in terms of movies with Crazy Rich Asians, which I think was a better casting in terms of she was playing kind of this, you know, American girl goes over and is very, like, intimidated by this, you know, super intimidating mother, potential mother-in-law. Yeah. So she, you know, very different kind of character than this, like you mentioned. Um, yeah, I think the scenes where she's trying to, like, learn how to dance from Jennifer Lopez, I mean, to a certain degree they're playing the fish out of water thing, but I think the other aspect of it is that she just didn't ever play off as someone who would even be in this situation. Like, I didn't yeah believe her character no. so I think that is a problem because she is the lead and she's in you know almost every scene in the movie um, she's a good actress I just don't yeah. feel like she was believable in this no. particular role this is one where I had a reaction to you did to like to add Astra because my film my Twitter feed was like blowing up over Hustlers after it premiered at the Toronto Film Festival I was hearing th seeing things like I literally saw this from very established critics best female heist movie of all time and I was thinking that would obviously be Widows or something well, else yeah no, Widows is the first one that comes to mind and lots of just lots of comparisons to Widows in the positive saying it was better than that no 
So there's also other problems with the filmmaking and the directing. One, we, there's like, I don't know how many montage sequences in here where they could have actually given yeah. us some plot and it goes yeah. into a montage and that's very lazy Well, it starts out with, you know, sort of, hey, Goodfellas. And I'm like, you know what? Copy it. Rip it right off. It's from 1991. People, half the audience is going to know who that is, what that is anyway, sadly. And just go for it. And they don't. And they just kind of, then it kind of loses and it doesn't have the intensity. I never felt anyone was in trouble when you watch Goodfellas, which I had recently uh, had done. You know, the main character, especially when you look at the helicopters, you get, you, you, you're you terrified because you're, you know, we're going to get caught. They're going to get caught. And it's constantly going, oh my gosh, then this movie, I never felt any kind of danger. I well, never felt nothing like that. Well, it's because I use like this that. narrative device, speaking well, of voiceover. They're doing it as a flashback. Yeah, yeah. So and so you kind of know like oh well they're talking yeah. about their story now like if they had saved that as a surprise instead of using that as a narrative yeah. device I think that might have helped also Jennifer Lopez is fantastic I think there are some really nice set pieces yeah. I mean it's an enjoyable film are yeah. you giving I liked it, it three stars it's yeah. also I three mean, stars it's a three star movie I, I did enjoy it's it it's a three star movie all the way through we watched it with your and, parents and how was that Angela <laughs> yeah we don't want to talk about that they didn't agree let's just say that there on this there wasn't film. a lot of nudity either and I like that because it didn't need, I mean it's about super sure sure and there would be some well, I didn't in the background I didn't think any of these, they kind of cut these around are A-listers, they're not getting yeah. naked. Well, they kind of cut around some things, because that wasn't the point of the movie, and it yeah. was fine for the me. The background people that. were yeah. naked. Sure, sure. <laughs> the ones who aren't under contract, like yeah. Jennifer Lopez. Although Jennifer Lopez's dancing, her entrance to the film, talk fantastic. about introducing a star to Fiona Apple's Criminal, is a yes. fantastic scene. And that, that to me, I was like, oh, well, that's like three stars right there, right? But yeah. then, yeah, I think it was the first, another film where the first half was much stronger than yes. the second half. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So. Got to stick the landing. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next segment, which is the viewer's pick. What's where you, the viewers at home, pick a movie for us two to watch and uh, this comes from a friend of the show mr brian knoll um who uh, actually i had the guest host many times and i uh, and angela and i adore brian very very much and we respect his opinion very We're very much keep saying that before yeah. we review hold on hold on brian <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> text me when you watch this one um so he suggested the movie swingers which i had never seen and he was appalled and it came up on streaming and he said uh, why i like this movie he says i understand that brian scott michael I'm going to always use my full name. Has never seen this indie classic that launched the careers of many familiar faces, including Vince Vaughn, John Favreau, <clears throat> Heather Graham, and Ron Livingston, not to mention the director, Doug Lyman, and uh, the Squirrel Nut Zippers. Remember them? Yeah. Uh, many of them are at their best, and I think it would be, nice, uh, it would be a nice pick for a solid flick. Um, this is a movie. John Favreau did write and, and wrote and directed this. No, so Doug Lyman directed Doug, it. Doug, excuse me. I always think Favreau directed this one. I still yeah, have that problem. He wrote it though. Yeah, and uh, so he wrote this, and it's uh, you know two friends. It looks like a total '90s movie. I don't know how to explain that, but it looks like a total '90s movie. And uh, two friends uh, who are just a players out there, not swingers. Which is oddly enough, but they're players. It's about so it has swing music in it. I guess that's why it would be called swingers. Because swingers would be something different. Ask your parents. So uh, they're out there, and they're you know out to go to Vegas, and they say "money, baby" a, a lot, a lot to the point where I really wanted to put my foot in my new big screen TV because it was just. Did you want it, it at one point? It was just, Vince I, would, in the I face would enjoy face. Vince Vaughn so much because Vince Vaughn is so funny. This is the film that made him a star, believe it or not. Oh yeah, they did Jurassic Park. Too, which was awful, and uh, and John Favreau, who I really like, and you and you know he's supposed to be this likable schlub who just can't get l lucky in love, and he tries too hard. He has this horrible conversation with the answering machine that's very stalkerish and terrible and horrible and awful, and it goes way past being um, cringy. It's just terrible and it's, it's like awful. A nightmare, yeah. yeah, and um, mm. and you and you 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 uh, relate to the person on the other side of the phone that we never see, or well, I guess we did see earlier. Yeah, this movie is a, a little bit of a, of a train wreck. I feel really bad about it because I'd heard so much about it, just never got around to seeing it, and now I've seen it, and I was so insulted uh, by it. <laughs> and I had to watch it again. So I, unlike Brian, had already seen it, which is why when I saw this was submitted as a viewer's pick, I yelled and said, Darn you, both of you Brians. Fine for, uh, because I actually saw this in the theater when it came out in 1996. I was in college when I saw this. So I'm, I'm prefacing this, by, by the way, to say that it's not like I watched it today in our woke culture and, th and put all my current values on it. I saw it as a college girl who was excited and was really into Miramax films at the time, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. You know, was totally, I was oh, totally hey, on board. Put it out, we so went I went and saw it. saw it, and I went and saw it, and I really disliked every single guy in this film. 
them. As a girl that age, I was just like, oh yeah, these are the guys that you avoid at the bar, and that includes jerks. John Favreau. Yeah. And he, the problem with the film is, if it thought it was making a statement about these guys, that they're actually posers, because it kind of gets to that point at one point, and sorry if I'm, any spoilers, but if you haven't seen a movie that's 30 years old, sorry, you know, whatever. Um, so, but, uh, um, what was I saying? Oh, um, you know, because it kind of does set it up that Vince Vaughn's character, despite being cool or whatever, you eventually re realize he's really a poser and he's kind of pathetic. But I think the film thinks John Favreau's character is the hero. He's the nice guy who had a girlfriend for a long time and he's torn up about his girlfriend. Yeah. He, even more so on repeated viewing, comes off as super creepy stalker guy. Really, he's like really he's like the toxic boyfriend yeah. that can't get over his girlfriend yeah, yeah. and then like stalks girls in bars yeah. and like says inappropriate things yeah. and calls them and leaves, you know, 20 Wait, messages on car. Yeah, he's not really the nice guy, and yep. that's the problem. And I think the whole feeling I had when I first saw this film, I had it all again. Not to mention, I really hated the swing music thing in the '90s, you know, with the cherry pop and like daddies and, and squirrel nut hands. zippers. Yeah, yeah. And but this movie tried <laughs> to like, you know, make it a thing. Yeah. And tried to get, let guys who went to bars feel like they could be in big packs like that and, and say dance things. To the music? Don't None, you nobody. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, okay. John Favreau, Favreau did Favreau dance. Did yeah. yeah. So Just yeah, I really dislike this film, and I guess I was sort of glad to yeah. know that my taste, you know, because you're near uh, 18, 19, whatever I was when I saw this. You know, I thought, well, maybe I misjudged it then, and now I'll love it. You know, I saw films then that I wasn't mature enough yeah. to fully understand, but I watched it. I'm like, no, I hate it just as much as I did the first time. <laughs> Yeah, it's bad. So, yeah. sorry. Um, anyway. Moving on. Moving on. So, <laughs> sorry, Brian no. Um Next time you should submit Train Spotting, though, and make Brian watch that one, because that uh, is a good film. I want to see it. Okay, so we'll go on to Her Fresh Picks. Those are the films that I have put together. And it's really a list of uh, f films, critically acclaimed films, um, from the current year that we missed <laughs> in the theater or never showed. You're backpedaling already. <laughs> Well, that's what it is. I haven't yeah, seen them before, sure. so they're not picks in that way. This oh. one's Under the Silver Lake. And the reason I was excited about this film is it's directed by David Robert Mitchell, mm. whose debut was It Follows, which we were Brilliant super film. excited Love about. Love that movie. And I thought, wow, it would be really exciting it. to see what his follow-up yes. is. And it was this. Yes. So a film no one saw. It went to the it went to film festivals. Right. And then it went to streaming. It is on streaming and yeah. it's available for free if you want to go down that route. I think it might be uh, on Prime. Pay or, for my, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe it isn't for free, but you might not want to even waste your time with that once we get done with this review. Andrew Garfield is in it, and he plays an aimless man who becomes obsessed with finding out what happened to his next-door neighbor in his apartment complex who has disappeared. The neighbor is played by Riley Keough. Am I saying her name last sure. name right? Um, so what he's trying to go for here, and I think you pointed it out as we were watching it very succinctly, is like, oh, this is like Mulholland Drive, but if it wasn't any good. So that's pretty much the review. Yeah. Um, it, you know, Mulholland Drive, appreciating David Lynch's ability to take something twisty and actually make it satisfying, because this one twists all sorts of things up. It throws in gurus and cults it's, and uh, religious and signs. On, this, on, this, on the scoreboard, which I still don't understand how that tied in. Yeah. He knew to write down those numbers. Signs from aliens, from yeah. the universe, conspiracy theories. I mean, he throws everything. Just, at, and I and at the end, I was like, I still don't know what this movie was about or what it was trying to, what, what? So what? if you don't think you're ever going to make a movie ever again, I mean, you know, uh, well, it's, he's a male, you know, a, a, a film director, so he'll get two or three tries. And uh, I said <laughs> before true. she did. And um, but, but uh, you, so his first film was a big hit. It was a fantastic film. Gosh, if you haven't seen it, it follows. I highly recommend seeing that. And then this is the one you can do whatever you want to do because you're a genius. And he threw in. The, I mean, the kitchen sink is in here. The pipes for the kitchen sink. The plumber is in this movie. I mean, everything <laughs> is thrown to this film. But. This is one of the most beautiful films. I did not write the cinematographer's name down. Hopefully you did not I either. Did not. He who also did it follows and did a, a few other things. That's just an amazing looking film. I can think of the scenes that made absolutely no sense, and I don't understand why they were there, but I can see them clearly because the they were so gorgeous. Oh my God, the water at night is under. I was fantastic. This is such an incredible looking film. I can't but think it, of a movie that had such beautiful cinematography and was such garbage otherwise. I'm sure we've mentioned a few, you know, but. I, I, I don't even know if you could tighten this up because even then we kind of find out what everything has had happened and what happened to this next door neighbor that disappeared. I just didn't care because you know. Well, you maybe, find out and you're like, so what's the big conspiracy? So what? So, Who cares? Okay, they're underground. So they're doing what's this going on? And, yeah, you're all going to die. But big then he, deal. but then he continues to just kind of unravel. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I just it, feel like maybe his character is supposed to be like he doesn't have a goal, so this becomes his goal. But he's such just, a cool cast. I love Andrew Garfield. I think he's a yeah, really good director. Yeah, his character's not very likable well, or interesting. I wouldn't mind that either if it's a good movie. Or but, if he's interesting. 
interesting, unlikable. Yeah. You can be un interesting yeah. and unlikable, but he's also what really is his uninteresting. Job? How does he afford he has, it? No, I don't I know. understand no, any of those things. But it's like it's David Lynch and Hitchcock and mixed together. Lots and of Hitchcock references. A lot, too much. a lot. Way, Didn't way they go past too many. The gravestone yeah, of Hitchcock, gravestone. And, we, and at that point, I turned to you. I'm like, I think we got it. Yeah, it, it already it, had a vertigo yeah. feeling. And gosh, you know, didn't it, need the Hitchcock. It just doesn't work. Just in case we didn't get that. That's the one thing he made really obvious. Hitchcock. So yeah, you know, you could have this movie on silent. You know, have a party, whatever, and have something pretty in the background. You know, instead of your screensaver, this movie would work. It's absolutely gorgeous. But I, yeah, it's I don't know. Bad. If it's salvageable if you re-edit it down to. I, I it don't could know. be shorter. It was over two hours, like two hours or twenty minutes, something like that. I mean, just shorter because it was such nonsense. I did, I just felt like well, you could have yeah. easily trimmed 30, 40 minutes. Wouldn't have made any difference. Doesn't make any sense at two and hours and twenty minutes. So. Sometimes you know why a film doesn't get any buzz and goes. Yeah, right sometimes. Under the radar. Sometimes though. There. So to wrap up this show uh, really quickly, because we're getting the wrap-up <laughs> sign, Ad Astra, three stars, lots of three stars. Yep. Three stars for Brittany Runs a Marathon, three yep. stars for Hustlers. We cannot recommend Swingers. We're sorry, Brian Noel. We still love you, and hopefully you still love us. And under the Silver Lake, we can't recommend. As always, we'd like to thank our sponsors and our fantastic crew. Find us on our website, realfilmsnobs.com, KMUZ, Corvallis, Silverton, and on YouTube. We're everywhere. Thank you so much. Have a great day and great movies. Thank you.